Okay, hello everyone. Without further ado, we will start our webinar session for today. And welcome to our webinar session today. My name is Anusha Nagai, and I'll be the moderator for this webinar session. I hope and pray everyone is well in the midst of this current pandemic, which continues to rage on throughout the world. While this pandemic rages on, we cannot forget another major threat to the survival of humankind, and that is nuclear weapons. Our topic of discussion today is journey towards nuclear disarmament. Just a little housekeeping before we get started. Please keep your mics muted during the session. And if you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the chat box. I'll bring them up during the presentation. And we will also have time for the questions at the end. And now, everyone needs a little good news these days, isn't it? So here is some. 2021 is the year of the ban. On Friday, 22nd January 2021, two days ago, the Nuclear Ban Treaty entered into force globally. This law means nuclear weapons are totally banned under international law. For your information, Malaysia was the 46th state to ratify the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapon TPNW. Ratifying the TPNW is Malaysia's tangible effort to advance the cause of nuclear disarmament on the international stage. It also reaffirms Malaysia's unwavering commitment and support towards the total elimination of nuclear weapons. On October 20, 2020, Honduras became the 50th country to ratify the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, which means that the pact passed in, at the United Nations in 2017 has now become the law. Hundreds joined countries such as New Zealand, Malaysia, and Jamaica in pledging never to produce, own, use, or store these nuclear weapons. The ratification represents a meaningful commitment towards the elimination of nuclear weapons. Our speakers for today will be Mr. Chan Fuki and Mr. Sakesh Raj Naraja. Mr. Chan and Mr. Sakesh have various experience and knowledge who we think are the best people to address the issues on this particular topic in our webinar session today. This webinar session is divided into three slots, 30 minutes for each slot. The first slot will be the sharing session by Mr. Sakesh, followed by a presentation by Mr. Chan in the second slot. And the third slot will be a moderated discussion, including questions from the audience. The speakers will illuminate on the topic nuclear disarmament. This webinar will explore the journey towards nuclear disarmament in the context of the collective efforts taken to abolish nuclear weapons, with a focus on the international laws and also addressing the current state of the abolishment. Now, without further ado, we will turn the time over to our first speaker, Mr. Sakesh Raj. Mr. Sakesh is currently doing his Master's of Philosophy in Engineering at UTM. He has a degree in Nuclear Engineering from UTM as well. He is also the Division Director G Toastmasters International for the year 2020 to 2021 and he has also done his internship at China National Nuclear Corporation. Mr. Sakic will be highlighting on the history of nuclear and nuclear weapons, focusing on the international laws before the birth of Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapon, the TPNW. And also, he will be speaking from the political and technological perspectives. Please welcome Mr. Sakesh Raj. Thanks a lot to our moderator, Anusha. So my name is Sakesh. To be exact, I'm not an expert in nuclear law and treaty because I didn't do anything regarding law. But I'm just here to share an experience and also my actual opinion regarding nuclear weapon from a nuclear engineering student perspective. It is important you ask me personally to understand nuclear into a different perspective. So allow me to do some sharing to you all. So first of all, let me share the screen. Uh, moderator, all of you can see my slide. If yes, do send a thumbs up or maybe a yes in the chat box. So I know all of you can see what's my slides located. Awesome. First and foremost, you need to understand about the history of nuclear. 
I found this timeline in online. It's actually from Nuclear Industry Association all the way from England. When we talk about nuclear, we always tend to associate nuclear with weapons, with bombs, with missiles. But nuclear is much more than that. My four years experience doing my degree in nuclear engineering made me to realize the good side, the positive side of nuclear. And it all started as an application, as a theory by many great scientists. One way, if you can notice, is Pierre and Mary Curie, Einstein, Rutherford, Niebuhr. All these people came together to develop the theory, the fundamental behind nuclear. But later, as time goes by, during the World War II, when Nazis, you know, German, they come to invade Europe and Japanese started to invade uh, Pearl Harbor and also the Asian side. And due to that, the only way to stop uh, Japanese from invading a lot, US came into the project called the Manhattan Project. If you all watch Captain America, you can notice that uh, one of the things that other than super soldier, this is friction, huh? but one of the things they use the same terms is Manhattan Project. Manhattan Project is a project to develop a mass destruction weapon. They didn't call it nuclear yet during the term. That's why it came into nuclear weapon. And they bombed Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I think Mr. Chan is going to explain a lot on Hiroshima and Nagasaki later. But as time goes, it's all started. And later, they started the first nuclear reactor and more into nuclear association and which created the organization international atomic energy agency in i also known as iaea is located in europe they in charge to oversee the laws and also everything related to nuclear and later in malaysia we also have our own vision of it call it uh l l e lembaga atomic tenaga lembaga atomic malaysia there's a difference between Malaysian Nuclear Agency or Agency Nuclear Malaysia and Lembaga. Lembaga is more towards overseeing the law and a Malaysian Nuclear Agency is more to research. I think one of our participants, Sabrina, has stated she has been done internship in Agency Nuclear Malaysia. Yes, Sabrina, Agency Nuclear Malaysia is where I did my lab when I was doing my degree. It's an awesome place. It's an awesome people. And as time goes by, we are in 2020 and Malaysia finally ratified on TPNW. Okay, now, this is a thing that I really want to press to all of us, is that nuclear is much more than a weapon. If there is a medical benefit, we can use nuclear for food, for mining, for electricity. Electricity is the one that is getting more common, nuclear power plant or NPP. And Sabrina will know during her internship during Malaysian Nuclear Agency that Agency Nuclear Malaysia or ANM also focus on doing research on radiation, on food, medical, and also some of other things. So it shows that nuclear is much more than a weapon. It also involves other application. This. I want to touch a little bit on uh, nuclear power. It is because this is what I've been studied for my past, past four years during my undergraduate nuclear power plant. And currently, we are at nuclear power plant generation 3 plus. We don't yet achieve generation 4 yet, even though there are many research is currently undergoing on generation 4. And yes, when you talk about nuclear power plant, many of us tend to call Hiroshi, uh, what do you call it, the Fukushima incident or the Chernobyl incident or the three miles. Yes, incidents do happen. And it is devastating to say it is a very bad incident that happened in Fukushima. But we need to see the technical aspect behind it. We need to see why it happened and what is the effect. And I think it's another lecture which required even more greater experts. But I do can share is that nuclear power plant is just like a knife, if you ask me. Knife is very dangerous to use. It can cut ourselves. Yes or no? When we use knife to cut vegetables, we can cut ourselves. But it doesn't mean that we have stopped using knife to cut vegetables. The way we use the knife will determine how safe the knife is. That's what I would say with nuclear weapon. It's a nuclear power plant, sorry, nuclear power plant is that 
if we know how to use it, it can bring a lot of benefits to all of us. But if you're being careless or we include some misunderstanding, it is quite dangerous. The same goes to other power plants when it comes to coal or so, uh, hydro or what. We need to know the safety aspect of it. So that's what I can say about that now. Let's talk about today's webinar. That is the non-proliferation. First and foremost, non-proliferation. Proliferation means weaponized. It's another term for weaponized. And non-proliferation means we don't want to weaponize nuclear. And we talk about proliferation, there's two types of it. We have horizontal and vertical. It's just like term, horizontal and vertical. Is that we do want current nuclear states like US to increase their nuclear arsenal. And second, we really do want other countries that don't have nuclear to have nuclear weapon. And this is applicable to other type of weapon, including biological and chemical weapon. Any type of weapon need to be stopped polyphrased. That is what we really want. But still, you know, there is a politic aspect behind it, there is an economic aspect behind it, in which maybe I can share a little bit based on my experience and also my research. Okay, first and foremost, what is a disarmament? Okay, the difference between proliferation and disarmament is that disarmament is that we want to eliminate an other person or nuclear weapon. Proliferation is that we don't want to convert the current resources into a nuclear weapon. It's a two different term if you really notice it. Disarmament is stop. Take all the nuclear weapon, change you something else. That is disarmament. Meanwhile, non-proliferation is that we don't want to increase or to use the current uranium. The uranium are the fuel that we use to make nuclear weapon. But the thing is that there's a, there's a technique aspect behind it. So let me share it to you a little bit on the technique aspect of it. Is that when a uranium enriched uranium 95, when we enriched to 3 to 4 percent or 5 percent, it is used as a fuel for nuclear power plant. Meanwhile, the same uranium we enrich to 90 percent and above 99, 95 percent, it is used for nuclear weapon. So this is the enrichment level. So when they, when a country started to enrich it into a very bigger level, like for example, if you're following up with news, Iran managed to enrich to 50%. That's why the ex-president of the United States, Donald Trump, started to do sanction. But this is different aspect of it. In, because if you like, oh, Iran is doing a lot. But everything can be done if you sit together and we discuss. Now, why disarmament and proliferation is a very important issue. It's a very important thing that every one of us need to learn. This is the current nuclear war ad that these countries predicted. Okay, this is very accurate information. Huh? You need to understand certain countries like North Korea, China, India, and Pakistan, and including Israel, never reveal 100% information regarding how many nuclear war aid or nuclear missiles they have. But this is a rough estimation that these countries have this much of nuclear missile. And if you're following up news, world news, uh, you know that North Korea, their nuclear missile at the range to reach Japan. And same goes to US. US nuclear missile can reach anywhere, anytime. Because it's all already been the technology advancement is so good. And this is a very concerning matter if you ask me as a nuclear engineering student. I support nuclear for peace. I support nuclear for power plant. But having this kind of weapon which can endanger human being, endanger the peace of the world, is something concerning. As a human being, we really need to take note of it. Because anytime anything can happen. During the Cuba crisis, I think uh, the prof is here, maybe she knows to be on uh, Cuban crisis when uh, the Soviet Union decided to send nuclear to the shores of Cuba, which almost caused the nuclear time to be 11.59 p.m. Nuclear time in which is almost one minute to, to start a nuclear war. That is the nearest we have achieved, nearest to reach nuclear war. So that is the nearest. 
and we do want to reach the same state during the Cuban crisis. That's a thing we really need to take note of it. When you talk about nuclear weapon, people always think, assume, in the movies, if you watch movies, when you talk about nuclear weapon, they press key, then they press two button, and suddenly the nuclear missiles start to launch from the ground. But it's much more than that currently. These are the types of delivery system that nuclear weapons are being used. And these are the current update I managed to find. And one of which is Ballista missile. Ballista is intercontinental. You can reach from from US, from US continent, the American continent, all the way to Asian continent. We have the cruise missile, sea base, artillery, rockets, submarines. You need to understand most of the nuclear bombs or nuclear missiles are located in submarines, and submarines have been traveling around the world in the international border. We are not sure when one of the submarines near to our shore. So it's a very concerning matter if you ask me, and also look at aircraft. Aircraft can reach in few hours in our country. And that is why it's really important for us to disarm nuclear before we can have a world, better world peace. Uh, TPNW is the current law, but before TPNW started, we actually have something called NPT, non proliferation Treaty. This is much more older version of it, in which it's still practical until now, that all of these laws actually complement each other. And the old treaty, 188 countries are being part of NPT. Meanwhile, only three decided not to be in it, that is India, Israel, and Pakistan. And it's more to a political agenda, I would say. When India started to develop their nuclear weapon, Pakistan feel like they threatened because you know the Indian and Pakistan conflict. That's why they both leave. Meanwhile, Israel, yeah, Israel are a good friend of US. Simple as that. I think every one of us in this uh, webinar will do agree that as long people are lobbying the US for the benefit of Israel, Israel is, even though I don't believe in the state of Israel, Israel is really will not enter this kind of treaty. The simple as that. Because it's all its political agenda. And these are the history behind the proliferation, the NPT in each country. So let's start with North Korea. North Korea actually been part of a treaty where since it started. But in year 20, 2003, he decided to leave from the treaty and tested his first nuclear device in year 2006, which they used simulation. We still, uh, I still don't know how did North Korea manage to gun their uh, testing, even though there are many theories behind it. Some say they detonate the nuclear weapon in those islands near North Korea. Some say they use uh, undergrounding testing. You need to understand North Korea information is still very secretive for outside people. Maybe country top leaders, they have this information for outside people is still very secretive. Meanwhile, India conducted their first nuclear missile testing on 1974, in which they say is for the peace purpose. And by 1998, they have done three nuclear testing. And later, when India started to do, Pakistan feel like, okay, guys, we need to go into it. And both of the country leave. Now, the same goes to Israel. Israel believed, okay, you need to understand, countries, many countries have been saying that Israel have nuclear missile. But political agenda, US and Israel relationship, we still not sure how many there. I've been trying to Google this information. I went to all the time I've been messaging all my friends who are doing PhDs, and masters on nuclear laws and everything. Everyone keep on saying the same thing. Because of the political agenda, we don't have the exact number of it. China started their nuclear testing in 1964. Okay, this is something fun about China is that they started their nuclear testing they nu through an institution, an educational institution. And later, this education institution grew to become one of the top universities in China. So it started as an education purpose, as an academic purpose, in which they came up with nuclear power plant, they came up with nuclear weapon. But it all started in the 
academic purposes. And you know about Russians. Russians started their nuclear testing in during their time as Soviet Union and UK and US because of World War II. The same goes to France. Fun fact about South Sudan. Huh? South Sudan never signed the treaty, but they don't have nuclear weapon. So because they never signed the treaty and they don't have nuclear weapon and they don't have the capacity according to some research, we tend to avoid South, South Sudan because they don't have the capacity. Okay, now, these are three main components when you talk about nuclear. Uh, maybe certain of us who have done internship or have done uh, nuclear studies, there's something, a subject called nuclear law during my undergraduate. And in this nuclear law or nuclear policy, there are three S that my lecturer tend to emphasize. Safety, safeguard, security. Safety and security is technical aspect and other things. But safeguard emphasize on proliferation, non-proliferation, in which we want our fuel, uranium, have been stolen to enrich to make the debox. That is the term safeguard. And this TS is very important that every nuclear engineering student during my undergraduate need to memorize it. We like is we need to keep note. Okay, three S is very important. It's like by far the important core values when it comes to nuclear safety, security, and safeguard. And that's very important for every one of us to know. So I was the person asked me. So when it comes to safeguard, there are three main components that IEA addresses: account accountancy, containment, and surveillance inspection the so accountancy is that every country that have nuclear power plant or any nuclear application including malaysia even though we don't have power plant but we have a research reactor in Bangi, and we also have radiation based medical devices if you notice it hospitals we have radiation based medical device devices so everything we need to have a proper record we need to show to them what is the current radioactive fuel, radioactive things we have it. Because it's important for us to know the value. It's important to know how much we have. And it must be safe as the actual one. That's why accountancy is very important. Next, containment. So if we have a fuel, let's say uh, NDT, non-destructive testing, by using uh, radiation material. So they have a certain fuels for that, certain type of elements. How are we going to contain it? How are we going to make sure that we know where is it every time. We can use CCTV, we can use GPS for tracking. We need to know every single one of it. And most important, inspection. We need to have an authorized body, just like in Malaysia, they have, they have our own authorized body. They do inspection to make sure that our accountancy, the containment and surveillance are on, is very accurate and on par with international standard. Before NPT, like I said, this is a timeline of histories in nuclear law. Before TPNW, there's NPT. Before NPT, there is CNTB, is Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, in which there is a law by United Nations saying that you cannot do testing in real life. It means they cannot do testing by go and send, send a nuclear missile into an island. If you watch the movie Godzilla, I'm not sure how many of you watch the movie Godzilla. If you notice, the old Godzilla, not the newer one, huh? the old one, the Japanese one. Godzilla is came into existence because they are nuclear testing in which he radiated the lizards to become the big giant creature. But the newer Godzilla, they have a different story behind it. I mean the old one, the Japanese, the black and white. So this is how the theory came, this is how the Godzilla movie came to be, first of all. That we shouldn't do any real testing, but they allow to do testing by using computer simulation. This, if you can notice, by seismic radionuclide, either of these are the computer. You can do that, but there are certain countries, just like I said, North Korea. They are theory saying that they are doing testing. Real means they launch into islands. I am not in the condition to tell yes or no. Because this is a very international law, I would say. And I'm not a spy. I'm not James Bond or Ethan Hunt. I'm just a normal student. We just want to share to you all. But maybe in future we will know. That's why I can say. 
And when we talk about nuclear, we need to understand about United Nations Security Council. They are the one oversees everything related to proliferation, other than IEA, another body, United Nations Security Council. The five the five permanent country in it is China, France, Russia, UK. These five countries have the power to veto anything. If you're following up with world news, these are the top five powers. Fun fact, we Malaysia was part of the Security Council because they are non 10 non-permanent members in which every five years they change. And we Malaysia, also, this is something very proud to say, we are part of Security Council in which we have sent our military to war zone in the name of United Nations. And this is very proud to say as a fellow Malaysian that we are part of security country in which we have overseen laws on nuclear proliferation. And this is not a treaty we need to understand. I know it's very boring. We talk about laws and laws and laws. Yes, when we talk about proliferation, we talk about ban in nuclear, it's all about laws, mostly about laws. But I want to make it fun is that if there is no ballista treaty, people can have a ballista thing. The ballista missile, but they can say, Oh, we have a ballista technology, but we don't have nuclear fuel in it, so it's nothing wrong. But they have the capacity to send, so that's why they came into this law uh, anti ballistic missile treaty is that countries should not have a lot of ABM, okay? they should have limited ballistic. But unfortunately, on year 2002, US leave this treaty because they want to create a lot of ballistic missile. Again, political agenda, superpower, they want to be in power, super threat. Now, these are the law. So later, Mr. Chan is going to explain in details about TBNW, but let me tell you briefly about NPT. NPT was first started in 1968 only included three countries, US, USSR, starting with Russia and UK. And later, 1970, it came to force and it extended by 1995 and currently still valid, in which we have 188 countries. Okay, when we talk about NPT, we need to understand about two main groups of countries. We have nuclear weapon states and we have non-nuclear weapon states. Obviously, you know, by nuclear weapon states, we have China, France, Russia, UK, and the US. They have agreed that they will control the amount of nuclear arsenal they have. They will never transfer nuclear weapon to anyone. They will not assist to manufacture or what. And they will help to pursue negotiation with countries, with each other, so they can end nuclear weapon. These are the promise they made. And same goes, same goes to the non-nuclear countries, like one of us, like Malaysia, that we will not build or have nuclear weapon. We use, we may, we may do research and produce nuclear for peaceful purposes. And we accept all the guidelines under safeguard under IEA. So these are the promises that we have made. But like I said, certain countries decided that promises are meant to be broken. Yeah, so they left TPW. And these are the secure assurances that NPT have given to all the countries is that they uh, nuclear country will not threat other country by using nuclear weapon. They will never threat. Except uh except during the era of President Donald Trump, yes, he did have threatened, which is violated NPT law. But I think when you talk about President Trump, this is another topic in which we really need political expert and diplomats talk on it. But personally, I can say that NWS country promised that they will never threat, never threat other countries, saying that you do you want to don't listen to us, we're going to bomb you. So they don't want to do that. Okay. So these are the overview that why NPT are very important. I'm going to touch on the Cuban Missile Crisis. Like I said, 
Cuban Missile Crisis is the nearest, nearest we had nuclear war. It's so near. And that's why President John F. Kennedy are so famous. Yes, other than his speech, don't ask what the country have done to you, ask what you have done to the country. Another reason why John F. Kennedy are so famous is because he have stopped and prevented nuclear war. So he had made few phone calls to USSR. He have managed to convince them to not send nuclear missile to Cuba. And imagine this treaty never exists now. Maybe country A can start to send their nuclear weapon to country B. And every day we will be doing a simulation on nuclear war. Just like in school, we tend to do fire simulation. If there's a fire, what we should do? Yes, it's a fun experience. You know, when a student, when we are fire drill, all of us love to run away because we love to skip classes. And same goes to university. And yes, in university, I never had opportunity to do fire drill. I don't know why. But in schools, we do a lot every year. And if countries never sign NPT, yeah, I personally think that every year, Every month, maybe, we will do a nuclear deal in which if there's a nuclear missile coming to us, what we should do. So these are the few things. I actually watched a video on nuclear drill long time ago during the Cuban crisis in school, they do. So when there's, a, when there's an alarm, the kids need to go under the table and hide. It is so weird to think about it, guys, now, that kids... Uh, students during the time of Cuban crisis in 1962, they need to be afraid of nuclear weapon every day because the nuclear clock was 11.59 to 12 p.m. But because of NPT, we don't need to worry about this now. We can enjoy, we can go Facebook, we can play games, we can go, do we can go dating, we can go malls. Uh, even though COVID's MCO, we can't do that. But I mean, like last year, this time, yes, we can do all of it. But imagine there's no NPT. Imagine we are being afraid of nuclear war anytime. That's why it's very important. We really need to have this kind of uh, loss to take care of all of us. Here are 13 practical steps that country have agreed to go 100% no nuclear arsenal. First and foremost, all the countries must go to CTBT, that is no testing. Second is that they have to do memorandum, I'm sorry for spelling this memorandum on nuclear weapon test explosion pending. Means they have to come up with a law, their own country law. Stop banning the product, production of fissile material of nuclear weapon for five years. The reason why these steps are coming into, they do step by steps. So if nuclear country just say US, they need to stop production of fissile metal, fissile elements for the next five years. Then they should go and disarm the current nuclear weapon. Stop and started to take step by step. And when it comes to step two, again strengthen the anti type missile. And finally, implement initiative, trilateral initiative. What I mean by trilateral initiative is that US, Russia, and IEA all come together all do at the same time. And IEA will uh, supervise this process. And this is another 13 steps. Okay, you'll be wondering why I started to show the pictures of Donald Trump and Mad Madman Theory. When uh, Anusha and the team came to me, asked me to talk, to do some sharings on the political perspective on nuclear weapon, I've been following up with uh, U.S. politics for for past four years. One of the thing I do every day is to read on political issues every country, like okay, every day on countries like U.S. and obviously mention political thing. One thing that made me worry about this theory called the Madman theory. So this Madman theory goes like this. So imagine a madman, someone who are crazy have the power to start a nuclear war. 
I remember reading this theory, this article when I was in my undergraduate, and I thought that is impossible. Humans are not mad enough to do that. No common sense. I won't do that. I won't go and fight a wall, maybe even a fist fight with someone bigger size than me. Because I'm very small, so I can go and, you know, someone big came to me into fire, I say, I run away. Even dogs, I'm afraid of dogs. Simple as that. If there's a lot of dogs, better run. And I never thought of people going to start a nuclear war until President Donald Trump innovation, in which we started to have crazy things happening. And one of it is US have launched missile to kill Iran general. Imagine he sent a missile to kill an Iran general, and this guy had the power to bomb or to start a nuclear war. Madman theory was almost close to be realized during the four, past four years. That's what I thought of it. It's like, oh God, please, please don't happen. And during the inauguration of President Joe Biden, God bless President Joe Biden, he said, we, Donald Trump, President, President Trump decided not to attend the inauguration. And one of the things that have been debated in uh, news media is that if President Trump didn't attend inauguration, are we going to send the nuclear football? The nuclear football is a device which, if you notice, when President was walking, there's someone carrying a big suitcase, a briefcase. That is nuclear football. They don't call me why they call it football. I have no idea on that. So they're getting a nuclear football in case something happened and the person decided to send a nuclear missile. According to US, every last minute of a person in power, the nuclear football must follow him. So imagine if Donald Trump didn't attend the inauguration and Donald Trump in Florida, he is still a president. And a president, a new president, a president in life is only considered a president after he saw on the oath during the innovation. How can a nuclear football fly all the way from uh, Florida to Washington DC? But US have managed to find a way to make sure that the minute President Joe Biden takes oath as president, the power of nuclear football went to President Joe Biden. And for the past four years, Nothing happened, and we really hope it will be keep on happening until the next, until the world destroys itself because of God wills. We don't want the world destroyed because of human wills. Huh? We really hope the world can't because of God wills, not human wills. And when you talk about nuclear and PT, these are the few things we really need to take notice about world politics. So during President Trump was in power. Before that, uh, President Obama, he did a nuclear deal with Iran, in which Iran had made a deal with US that US will not do any more sanction towards Iran, and Iran will stop enriching uranium. It's a win-win for both countries, and everyone thought world peace. Again, President Trump came over, he withdrew US from the deal, and because of the withdrew, US did sanction towards Iran, Iran got mad, Iran started to enrich. Uranium. Simple as that. When someone do a good thing, please make the good. Please maintain the good thing. Don't act smart and change it. That's why I can notice. And when President Biden came into power, he made promise that he will return United States to the discussion table. Let's sit and discuss. We can't have. You can't play like small kids. You know, you know, Malay people say, Saya ugu, you, you ugu, aku, kita gado gado tumbo tumbo. You can't do that. We need to sit and discuss like an adult. That's what I can say. And before I end my presentation, huh, personally, if you ask me, I believe in nuclear for peace. My personal internship, my personal experience doing internship in China, my experience of studying nuclear, for past four years, my lab in Agency Nuclear Malaysia, my discussion with all my fellow friends in IEA, with Agency Nuclear, with all with my friends who are doing PhDs in nuclear law, is that nuclear are good. 
the concept itself is really beneficial but just like a drug you know drugs it, you know the term is menyalahgunakan misuse of drugs that's why we have cocaine and ganja and ice but the drug itself is a medicine used in a good way same goes to nuclear used in a good way is good so these are the four questions that i want all of us to think you don't need to answer me just think of it is it still reliable or viable or relevant npt or tpnw with current international security permit you not all country have signed the treaty the other country you decide not to sign is it still relevant first and foremost second is it really possible for us to achieve world peace without nuclear nuclear free no nuclear at all 100% is it possible second will the nuclear capable country continue to believe that the security is lies under npt what i mean by can we still trust this law imagine yes for 5 years ago yes but during the time of president trump even though us is nws and we are uh and nws but we have been afraid so any time madman can launch a nuclear missile so security lies and pt can be acceptable and finally this is a question that i've been wondering for many years since i started my undergraduate if nuclear started as a energy source not as a weapon will all of us with acceptit will malaysia have gone nuclear energy if you notice they are biological weapon they is chemical weapon but we still keep on using chemical for daily usage even you notice oil and gas we have mexican gulf incidents we have deep water horizon incidents but still we keep using oil and gas there is still extraction of oil in that through platform in middle of the sea but meanwhile nuclear is a taboo topic or oh, nuclear is very bad so imagine you face Mr. Sakesh, are you there? Uh, Anusha, how about you keep on? Yeah, about the the next part. Yeah, am I when Mr. Sakesh uh, coming back? Then we continue. Okay, so. I think Mr. Sakesh is almost done with his presentation because this is the last slide. So, okay, now I think we can uh, thank Mr. Sakesh for the very informative and interactive and engaging sharing. Mr. Sakesh emphasized that nuclear is not only the not only weapon and it's much more than that. That uh, by explaining the different types of applications of nuclear technology such as medicine, electricity, and so on, he also introduced. Uh, proliferation and he stated how the treaty on the non proliferation of nuclear weapon complements the tpnw and what are the nuclear countries and non nuclear uh, weapon countries the negative and the positive sides of the npt the political agenda involving the superpowers the madman theory and many more and i'm pretty sure we gained a lot of new and interesting inputs from mr sakesh so once again thank you mr sakesh and so with that, I we actually plan to have the because in the chat there were questions from Mr. Sakesh. But I think we need to put a hold onto it and continue to chance uh, Mr. Chan's presentation, and we'll continue with the questions from Mr. Sakesh later on. So moving forward, now I would like to invite our next speaker, Mr. Chan Fuki. Mr. Chan is the member of Soka Gakkai Malaysia, actively in promoting nuclear banning activities for the past eight years. Now he is a master's student of IT entrepreneurship at UTM. Also, at the same time, he is a social entrepreneur. 
He believed people should help for each other for not hurting each other. For the past eight years, Mr. Chan is a peace talk speaker, performer, and event organizer for more than 20 schools with the topic of banning nuclear weapon activity, such as Run for Peace 2013, 2015, 2017, 19, and under the SGM program. Besides that, he is the event organizer and volunteer of nuclear banning exhibition awareness program, such as Seed of Hope and Everything You Treasure under SGM program. Okay, the next slide. Here is the photo being Run for Peace, uh, Run for Peace 2019 at Dr. Marco. More than 12,000 participants joined this nuclear disarmament awareness program. And there are like 110,000 participants from nationwide. Mr. Chan today will be focusing on the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapon, highlighting the importance of this treaty and the importance of abolishing nuclear weapon. Please welcome. Yeah, a very good morning to all the, uh, all my friends, all the attendees, yeah, all the lecturer, professor, yeah, all my uh, classmates, yeah, all my uh, group groups mates, friends, yeah, welcome, yeah, welcome to all of you to our webinar, yeah. Before I start, I would like to play a video, yeah, so to, to start on my part. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mr. Chan, there is no sound in the video. Yeah, no sound. Okay. Yeah, so sorry. So, never mind. I will start my part. Yeah, sorry. Okay, sure. Yeah, okay. Now I would like to talk about what is TPNW, okay? TPNW stands for Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, yeah, which is entered into force on 22nd January 2021, which is uh, two days ago. Okay, for this slide, this is uh, the, the pictures taken from 1945. August, 8th of August, uh, 6th of August, yeah. U.S. dropped an atomic bomb on the Japanese city of Hiroshima, okay. Japan is the only country being attacked by nuclear bomb, yeah. So the United States 
detonated two atomic bombs over the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in August 1945, killing 210,000 uh, people, children, women, and men. In the years that follow, many of the survivors would face leukemia, cancer, or other terrible side effects from the radiation. In Hiroshima, 90% of physicians and nurses were killed or injured. 42 of 50, 45 hospitals were rendered non-functional, and 70% of victims had combined injuries, including in most cases, sewer burn. Okay. Now, I would like to uh, share a word yeah, from Mr. Daisaku Ikeda. Yeah. Nothing is more precious than peace. Peace is the most basic starting point for the advancements of humankind. Okay. Although we always heard that health is the most important thing in our life, but after reading Mr. Daisaku Ikeda's peaceful statement, now we know that peace is the most important thing in our life. Because if there is war, all the issues relating to health, economic, wealth, environment, and so forth are nothing. Yeah. So, Mr. Daisaku Ikeda is Soka Gakai International SGI President, a Japanese philosopher, educator, poet, author, and nuclear disarmament advocate. He contributed philosophical and practical suggestions to United Nations in his annual peace proposal since 1983 until now. Yeah. He was the awardee of 393 honorary doctorate as at 23rd January 2021, top honorary degree recipient in the world. Yeah. Honorary citizenship more than 800 cities, states, and local governments around the world. Yeah. So among the 393 honorary doctorate, three honorary doctorate was offered by our Malaysia. Yeah. So uh, there, there are Putra University, Open University Malaysia, and UN Malaysia. Okay, now I will share the words by United Nations General Secretary Guterres. Okay, he said, the total elimination of nuclear weapons is the DNA of the United Nations. Okay, so now uh, for this uh, figure, we can see that on the left hand side, yeah, Hiroshima, Nagasaki. Okay. The two bombs detonated over Hiroshima and Nagasaki are the only two ever detonated in history. However, building larger nuclear weapons have become a new priority. Hiroshima only detonated 15 kilotons of energy. We say only because Hiroshima impact looks tiny by comparison by comparison to the following weapons. Yeah. So the next. Yeah, B83 bomb. Okay, B83 bombs is 80 times more powerful than Hiroshima. The next, Kessel Bravel. Kessel Bravel is 1,000 times powerful than the bomb in Hiroshima. And Sa Bomba by Soviet. Okay, so it is 3,333 times powerful than in Hiroshima. So the theoretical Sa Bomba not yet released. Yeah, for this uh, GIF, yeah, it is the nuclear blast. Okay, research shows that effect of unleashing 100 nuclear weapon would be significant drop in global temperature as shoot from nuclear blast prevents sunlight from reaching the Earth's surface, reduce precipitations, could severely impact food production. If the agricultural productivity reverts to pre-industrial use because of a nuclear drug, most countries would not be able to feed themselves. Yeah. 
this figure shows the nuclear weapons spending during 2019. Yeah. In this there are total nine nuclear weapons countries. There are US, UK, Russia, Pakistan, North Korea, Israel, India, France, and China. US spent most money on nuclear weapons. The second was China. So uh, for, for us to understand more about these uh, billions, the, the, the figure of billions, Mauritius, year 2020 GDP was 333 billion, meaning to say 20% of Malaysia GDP is being spent on nuclear weapons. Okay, this figure shows total firepower of nuclear weapons on today which is 700 times more powerful than during World War II, okay? And these 700 nuclear weapons available for immediate of use. Yeah. Before moving to the next, now I would like to share the info of chemical weapon. Yeah, Syria itself was attacked by chemical weapon, as we see in the photo. Many kids were attacked by poisonous gas. Poisonous gas takes area of effect regardless of age of uh, races. Yeah. So what I'm, I want to talk about this uh, chemical weapon is it because it is cruel and vicious, vicious and it was banned in ICC. ICC means International Criminal Court. Okay. The next I would like to talk about is a biological attack. Okay, biological attack are those virus attack because it takes area of effect as well and inhuman, regardless who you are. So it was banned in ICC as well. So this photo shows uh, is taken is the atomic bomb on uh, Hiroshima. Okay, nuclear weapon is more cruel and powerful than chemical and biological weapon yeah because there is when there is a virus or chemical attack we still can invent a vaccine to cure the patient but when there is nuclear bomb attack we can't even find the body or we can't even find the corpses so here is the question why such a dangerous weapon is not banned Okay. Here is the answer given by Bitrise Finn. She is the awardee of 2017 Nobel Prize for ICANN winner, executive director of International Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapon ICANN, and a Swedish lawyer. She said biological weapon and chemical weapon were banned because international norms have been set. Perception has been changed. International norms and perceptions are two main points that nuclear weapons don't have now. So let's see the next slide. Okay. Yeah. Now I would like to share a word to you all. Yeah. Nuclear deterrence. Okay. What you all can see for this picture is nuclear weapons are being pointed to each other throughout the entire planet. Okay. This is what we call nuclear deterrence. Yeah. In Bahasa, we call penjagaan nuclear. In uh, Tamil, we call Anu Tatupu. Yeah. So in Mandarin, we call Hawaii Sir. Okay. This means the countries threatening each other and pointing their nuclear weapon on each other for the reason of self-defense. Because self-defense is legal. A nuclear weapon is allowed in international law. So big countries use nuclear weapon for the reason of self-defense is legal. Now we are clear that there is a big legal gaps or what we call loopholes, big loopholes in the law before TPNW. Okay. Yeah. So before moving to next, I would like to share my favorite yeah, comic Naruto. Okay. In Naruto, there are nine kilobits in Naruto. Okay, 
similar to nine nuclear weapon countries in real world. Okay. So we should create peace by dialogue, understanding and helping each other, but not nuclear deterrence. We should create world peace. Yeah. For, for example, even the insect, red ant, know to help each other. How can we, human, as the soul of the uni universe, still fighting each other? Okay, now this slide I would like to touch a little bit about NPT. NPT is the law before TPNW. Okay. NPT stands for Nuclear Non Proliferation Treaty. NPT was put into force on 1971, participated by 191 countries. It is the most universally supported legal international law regarding nuclear weapons. Most importantly, the five major nuclear countries, namely Russia, US, France, China, and UK, are states party to NPT. Our country, Malaysia, is one of the among 191 countries as well. NPT got three main objectives. The first is non-proliferation. The second is peaceful use of nuclear energy. Third is nuclear disarmament. Yeah. But until today, there is no instrument set up to ensure compliance of this disarmament obligations by the nuclear weapon states parties. This situation is like whereby promise were made, but there was no commitment shown and no action had been taken. This treaty has now been extended indefinitely since 1995. That means there is no deadline for the nuclear disarmament. There are apparently bigger gaps left wide open in the international law. This has made people to worry those big countries can utilize nuclear weapons for the excuse of self-defense because self-defense is legal. Now we have TPNW, okay? TPNW, Treaty on the Prohibitions of Nuclear Weapons. Okay? The functions of TPNW is plain enough to create the international law to make nuclear weapons illegal for whatever reason, even in the case of self-defense. Article 4 of TPNW says, in no uncertain term, that the ultimate end of TPNW is to abolish and eliminate nuclear weapons. Okay, so 22nd January 2021, two days ago, the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons entered into force. Yeah, congrats to all of us. So this statement was given by Dr. Sri Hishamuddin Tun Hussein, Minister of Foreign Affairs. He said, we are convinced that the ent entry into force of the, of the prohibition of nuclear weapons, TPNW, strengthens the global norms against nuclear weapons. Sends a clear message that nuclear weapons are categorically unacceptable and complements the existing international legal instrument relating to nuclear disarmament and non-proliferation. So Malaysia is the 46th country to ratify TPNW on 30th September 2020. Okay. So in Facebook, the official account from a foreign ministry, which is called Visma Putra. So they are also post their uh, congratulation notes of TPNW. He said, Malaysia is committed to adopt the necessary measure to implement its obligations under the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, TPNW, and will continue to work closely with other partners to realize the long overdue goal of a world free of nuclear weapons. Okay. Here is the figure yeah, yeah, showing those five countries who ratified DPNW as at 23rd January 2021. Okay. 
as you all can see, the blue dot, uh, uh, no, as you all can see, the red dot is all the Southeast Asia country, for example, Thailand, Vietnam, yeah, Laos, Malaysia, and Cambodia. And the blue dot, yeah, for example, South Africa. South Africa is the only country to have built nuclear weapons and then voluntarily dismantled them. Now, South Africa also one of the 52 countries to ratify TPNW. Thirdly, to inform you all that Japan, the only country being attacked by nuclear weapon. At the beginning, Japan showed its interest in TPNW, but due to the pressure from US, Japan withdrew from signing TPNW. Yeah. For New Zealand, although it is the earliest countries from US, but New Zealand ratified TPNW. Yeah. Congrats, New Zealand. This uh, table shows those countries that abandoned nuclear weapons program. They are Argentina, Belarus, Brazil, Iraq, Kazakhstan, Libya, Republic of Korea, South Africa, Sweden, and Ukraine. Okay, after the TPN that we put into force, what do we do? Okay, we need to, in order to give TPNW, a more effective legal force. Article of the Rome Statute of ICC, International Criminal Court must be amended to make nuclear weapon as world crime as well. Currently, ICC admits biological chemical weapons are world crime, but not nuclear weapon. So this is the next step we need to do for world peace. Okay, if people ask is that urgent to ban nuclear weapon? I would definitely say yes. It is indeed an extremely urgent task. The resources in our planet is more than enough to feed anyone living in this planet. But due to selfishness, vicious, cunning, and crucial behavior, we wasted the natural resources on destructive war. Money spent for nuclear weapon should be used for the betterment of global society. World Food Program has recently revealed that some 30 million people are at risk of dying and it needs 4.9 billion to fit for them for one year. Nuclear weapons countries spend nearly 70 billion a year to maintain their nuclear weapons, which is 14 times the amount we need to feed those who are dying. Okay, now I would like to recall to all of you, okay, this is the amount spending during 2019. 72.9 billion US dollar was spent on nuclear weapons. Yeah, actually from my research, we just need 33 billion a year to end the world, the whole world hunger. And we just need 10 billion a year to solve Africa water crisis. But we spend on nuclear weapon. Furthermore, research shows that US nuclear force budget will cost 494 billion from 2019 to 2028, which is equivalent to 50 billion a year. All the money in this world is belong to our planet, our Earth. How can we use the money to attack ourselves? So this is quite ridiculous. We ought to use the money for our planet in constructive way. Okay, this is the 17 goals of uh, SDG. SDG stands for Sustainable Development Goals. If able to convert the multi-billion dollars amounts of money that spent for nuclear weapons for United Nations SDG 17 goals of sustainable development. I'm pretty sure we can solve entire SDG 17 goals. Besides that, recently, nuclear weapons are now being modernized at the fastest pace 
ever to become more deadly and cause more costly. We all know now is digital era. Sure, there are billions dollars of money had been spent on so on and so forth. They are nearly warheads being on high alert throughout the world now. And there were more than 20 accidental detonations of nuclear weapons before, and it may happen again anytime. There were six nuclear weapons have been lost and never recovered. It may fall into the hands of the terrorists, which has merciless to lives of others. There may be system error, cyber attack, or nuclear system, since defense system is becoming less human now due to emergence of AI. Hence, we must not wait any longer to put an end to the, nu to the nuclear edge now. From the history, we do Google, if we do Google research, there were countless of revolutions were established for the betterment of humankind, such as industrial revolutions, digital revolutions, and etc. Countless law were put into force, such as criminal law, company law, labor law, and etc. But today, crime is still going on. Even we know drug trafficking, human trafficking, murder are illegal. But people are still risking their life to break the law. So what do we learn from the past? So no matter how precise the law were made or designed, people would still find their way to break it. The only solutions to solve the current complex world issue fundamentally without any side effects is human revolution. That is changing from the inner bottom of our heart. By then, we can change our world. Okay. Mr. Daisaku Ikeda once said, a great human revolution in just a single individual will help achieve a change in the destiny. Further, can even enable a change in the destiny of all humankind. Yeah, so uh, that's, uh, that's all for my today's sharing. Yeah, so I would like to pass my time to Anusha. Thank you very much. Thank you for all your time of listening. Thank you. Very insightful presentation. Mr. Chan gave us a very clear analysis and particularly so from the perspective of the law and that international law stands at the moment, as it stands at the moment, the NPT is not helpful for the abolishment of nuclear weapons and often on nuclear weapons for, and, and highlighting clearly the need for an international law that prohibits nuclear weapon and why TPNW is needed in abolishing the I believe that is why the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapon is stated to be the first legally binding international instrument to comprehensively prohibit nuclear weapons. He also highlighted very clearly the destructiveness and immorality of nuclear weapons possessions and use. So now, ladies and gentlemen, now we would like to move on to our next lot, a moderated discussion session between the speakers and the moderator. So now uh, let us see the first question. Uh, Ms. Natila, can you share the question? Thank you. Uh, Ms. Natila, not this question. The questions are prepared by our team. The questions from the audience will uh, will be answering after our questions. Uh, Anusha, 
Yeah, is Mr. Sarish answering this question? Uh, just a minute, Chai. Uh, we will uh, wait for uh, Nadila to open the slide. Okay, thank you. Okay, I think uh, Ms. Nadila is uh, having problems in opening the question directly. Okay, the first question is that a new global treaty ban nuclear weapons. Does that mean that we can stop worrying about King John's nuclear ambitions, the fate of the United States and Russia to broker arm deals, China's expanding arsenal or tensions between the nuclear arms? No. The nine nuclear states, namely the US, UK, Pakistan, Israel, and North Korea, and their military injuries to this treaty, which prohibits the countries from owning, producing, and hosting nuclear weapons. What is the nuclear armament and non-nuclear pro proliferation? Will this treaty still be effective? So what is your and Sasakish? Uh, who'd like to start first? Maybe you can start first. So uh, the question is shown in the in the screen, is it? Yeah. Okay, so I repeat the question. The nine nuclear states and their military allies are not signatories to the treaty, which prohibits countries from yeah, okay. So what's the impact of TPNW on nuclear disarmament? Yeah, okay. Yeah, will this treaty still be effective? Okay. So although uh, those nine uh, nuclear weapon country is not in the did, did not ratify TPNW, but we as the non-nuclear weapon country, we put on our hands. Yeah, we uh, put the TPNW to ICC, International Criminal Court. Yeah. And then we need to stress, uh, we need to put the pressure on ICC and tell them how important of TBNW. Slowly, we believe, yeah, so ICC will accept our, our uh, application. Yeah. So the next step of TBNW is to move, is moving to ICC. Okay. So did I answer the question? Okay. Anything? Um, okay, Anusha, will the treaty be still effective or not? Okay, I'm not going to talk more on the law, but I'm going to use some common sense. Let's let's play with some common sense. Okay, you know the traffic light, the traffic light we tend to have in the road. Green means go. Yellow means slow down, they don't stop. But is every Malaysian following that? Correct. Uh, no. Yeah, uh, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it doesn't mean that the traffic light have failed to do their job. As simple as that. Traffic light is there to make sure that we be safe. Because there are people who follow, there are people who don't follow. Simple as that. But people never follow, we have police to catch them and give them summons. Simple as that. And this kind of treaty, same goes to this kind of treaty, I would say. There are countries who never sign it, but it doesn't mean that they are, they, there is, isn't any bodies that didn't take note of that. We have IEA, we have United Nations Security Council. We also have other countries, you know, countries that don't like these countries, keeping intact. Have this check and balance looking and date and making sure that they are following the law, even they didn't sign. So as long we have leaders who think about the people, and as long they are academicians, smart people who always fight, like Mr. Chan is in the Sokagakai, I think this if treaties will be effective. 
until there is no any more mad more person, mad person or crazy person who decided to do based on what he want to do. But like I said, only God knows. Simple as that. The entry into force of this TPNW is obviously a momentous achievement and a significant victory, but from can conclude is that it, it marks a new beginning. The efforts to spread the taboo against nuclear to expect the TPNW to more rather the TPNW should be viewed as a a legal starting point or an next question two clearly the treaty seems to be rattling the superpowers the us for example find the support of the ban treaty why would U.S., with its thousands of warheads, be afraid of a legal document that cannot? What is your command on? Okay, thank you. Let me read the question. Clearly, it's the treaty seems to be... Yeah. So the treaty seems to be wrecking the superpowers. The US, for example, okay, has called on countries to rescind their support of the Ban Treaty. Why would the US, with its thousands of warheads, be afraid of a legal document that cannot force it to give up its weapons? Okay. Yeah, from my research, yeah, US spends multi billion dollars on nuclear weapons. I'm pretty sure if we ourselves, we spend billions of dollars on something, we don't hope uh, the money we spend would be wasted, correct? So I think uh, from my point, on, point of view, yeah. So US, uh, yeah, for, for, the econo for the monetary issue, they don't want to, they want, they want, they don't want to comply with the legal, legal part. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chan. Yes, I agree to that. And I, and even uh, from my research, the ICANN believes that it is because the treaty will create powerful new norms that will stigmatize this class of weapons. And also, like you said, there's a lot of money to be made in the production and maintenance of the world's deadliest arsenal. And that is, of course, the money that was not spent on education, health scares, or things like that. Uh, so, yeah, that answered our question. So, we can, I think we move on to the third question. Okay, the third question is a very general question. It is on August 6, 1945, the Japanese signed an atomic bomb was denoted over Hiroshima. Most of the cities was destroyed, and by the end of that year, I think hundreds of thousands of inhabitants have died as a result of the blast and its short-term effects. So, it has been, I think it's the 75th anniversary of the atomic bomb now. What do you think we have learned from that uh, historic event? Uh, Mrs. Akish, Mr. Chan, you yeah. can answer the question. Mrs. Akish, uh, you can start. Yeah, thanks a lot, Anusha. What you have learned? Okay, it's, it's to make it very simple, is that we humans can be really crazy. Okay, the moment we think to kill another living being, like other living beings, it shows that we are losing in our moral values. When Einstein, I want to quote Einstein on this matter. One of his greatest regret of his life is to contribute in Manhattan Project. Same goes to 
uh, Obines, the guy who founded, like, who initiated the rockets, he also say the same thing. He afraid when his own invention go against human civilization. And did we learn anything from it? No. Yes, we are here. We are talking about deterioration, disarmament, proliferation. Yes, but initiatives are taken. But still, every day, there are people who want to monetize it, who want to use it for their own benefits. We can see during the Trump era, when President Trump era, he want to increase a lot of nuclear arsenal. So as long we don't include the importance of human values, and we never learn from history, it still remain nothing. There will be another Hiroshima and Nagasaki. All you have to do is that we come to an agreement. We should put human first, the values of a human being. Then I would say that we have learned something from this thing. And as long as we never consider other human beings, we never see them based on their skin color, based on their race or their religion or even their economic status, then nothing can be done. But I hopefully people who attended this webinar, I see 75 people attended this webinar. We have learned something that do not think that nuclear is bad, but anti-nuclear weapon and learn from it and do what's best. Chan, maybe you can add on. Hi, thank you, Mr. Stakesh. Yeah, okay. So what what we learned, okay, from the atomic bomb, okay. Firstly, I would say where an atomic bomb is being planted or detonated on the floor of Japan, yeah. It kills all the living beings, human, no matter you are human, yeah, you are male, female, you are animals, all the buildings, yeah, all the uh, structure were ruined, all is ruined, all is destructed, yeah. So we can clearly say that it is a totally, uh, uh, it is totally a vicious instrument in our world, okay. Because actually, we, uh, for, for the soldier, they just want to kill enemy, right? But the soldier, they kill not only the enemy, they kill all the good people, all the bad people, all the unrelated people, all the unrelevant people. They kill all. Yeah. That is kind of madness. Yeah. Some, this is, uh, for example, when we are angry, our, we cannot control by in, our emotion, right? When we are angry, we hurt everyone uh, around us. So atomic bomb or nuclear weapon is something like when we are angry, we ruin all the good things and all the bad things. Yeah. So that's my answer, what I learned. Okay. Okay, since Anusha is uh, having internet connection loss, okay, so we move on to question four. Okay, for so questions for, yeah, Anusha, yeah. Um, now we are uh, question uh, four. Sorry with the internet problem. It's okay. Uh, I just want to comment, share both of your uh, comments on the question. And I would say that, I uh, guess, those are the points to ponder about, to think about it. And I think that is the cross of support for the nuclear ban. There is humanitarian cost to the arm. Countries that do not possess these weapons would still experience devastating effects. The world's climate will be harmed in many ways and things like that. So I think. Hello. Uh, so I think that is why we really need to ban this nuclear weapon. OK, thank you. To moving on to the next question. OK, the next question is that. Why is it really important for us as an individual to support this nuclear ban movement? Think on what we as a people, as an individual, can do to support the rectification of the TPNW by more countries. We know that only 51 states have ratified the treaty. So what do you think that we can do? 
as an individual to ratify uh, for the ratification process? Mr. Chan, maybe you can answer this. Yeah, okay. Yeah, as a correction, today there are 52 countries in total who ratify TPNW oh, wow. because okay. Cambodia just ratified it two days ago. Okay, so to, today we have uh, 52 countries. So Anusha, you can see, can you see the difference? Yeah. Uh, two days ago, probably three days ago, there is 51 country. But during 22nd January, there are 52 countries. Can you see the difference? So we need all the, we need to inform the individuals. Yeah. No matter of us. Yeah. We need to, when we think the thing is right, then we need to do. When it is uh, beneficial to our planet, we need to do. Slowly, 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 we may attract those who have the same thinking with us. Yeah. Although now it's been 50, 52, I believe in the coming months, in the coming years, there are 53, 54, hundreds and more than that. I'm very sure. Yeah. Because we cannot uh, forget that one, this one, the is the mother of 100. One is the mother of 1,000. One is the mother of 10,000. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chan. Um, Mrs. Hakish, would you like to add on? Okay. I think I do agree with Chan that the countries that started to ratify TPNW keep on increasing. I think the best thing we as a Malaysians can do, uh, personally as individually, is to do this kind of webinar, simple as that. The moment we started to create awareness to people, the importance of TPNW, uh, non-proliferation non -proliferation or disarmament, people can give this opinion, their voice to their parliament people. Okay? Each of these adults or parliaments, parliamentarians, their job is to bring our voice in the parliament. So by doing this kind of webinar, by creating this kind of awareness, it's our job to lobby our elected leaders to bring our voice in the parliament. Okay. So these are the things that we can do. And this kind of webinar we need to do in, I would say, in every country that didn't ratify to bring awareness to people. When I was doing my undergraduates, I was very interested in my society. Because we want to bring people the awareness on the nuclear energy, to see nuclear energy, what it is all about not to see as a weapon. And by doing this kind of awareness, we hope that people will see the truth behind nuclear. And I think this is the same concept applies for a nuclear weapon banning. Hello, thank you, uh, Stakesh. Thank yeah, you. I would like to Absolutely. add on something about my past experience, okay? So I started the, the nuclear disarmament awareness program eight years ago. I started when I was 22. Yeah, now I'm 31. So during that time, when, when I do the exhibitions, when I do the, the performance during Run for Peace, probably people that uh, people don't understand. Yeah, probably the friends around me that don't understand wow, why Fuki is doing this kind of thing. But after eight years of effort, yeah, and of course, not not sorry my effort, I just contribute a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Mauritius today already ratified TPNW on uh, last year. Yeah. So so here is the here is what individual can do or support on ratify TPNW. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Chang and Mrs. Akesh. What I can see is that from Mrs. Chang clearly stated that uh, we need to have a positive mindset. He said that one is the uh, one is number. Uh, sorry, he stated that one is the mother of all numbers. I think that's a very important point to think about. That we need to keep a positive mindset towards something. And imagine that we as a citizen, we can create awareness of what is at stake by. Different agendas, maybe on religious, social, any organization we are a part of, spreading the word by sharing relevant contents on social media platforms or anything. We will continue to raise awareness of the catastrophic humanitarian impact of nuclear weapons. 
And also, depending on uh, the individuals, we can also urge political leaders and those who can influence them to fulfill long-standing commitments to nuclear weapons reductions and elimination. Uh, joining the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons and uh, working to reduce the risk of the nuclear weapons may be used. So, uh, just like Mr. Sakir said, our start uh, but uh, I'll start to the efforts of what an individuals can take, for example. Okay, now I think uh, questions from my side are covered. I think there's a lot of questions from the audience from the chat box I can see. Questions I'd like to answer them. Okay, the first one is a question from uh, Noor Fatiha. I heard Mr. Sakesh is doing internship in China related to nuclear things. Could you please share your working experience in China National Nuclear Corporation? Mr. Sakesh, uh, can you share? I think not just Noor Fatiha, even I am interested in uh, listening to the, the stories or interesting things you're going to say. Uh, I'm not doing, uh, I already finished. It's like the English there is wrong. It's did internship. Okay. But the thing is that. What I want to share about my experience, I think I want to look into how nuclear uh, plays an important role in Chinese community in China. When I reach China, and it made me to think is that university plays an important role in the development of nuclear technology in China. There's a university called Tsinghua University. I'm not sure how many of you have heard it. Tsinghua University is top 10 in the world if you Google it, Tsinghua University. And this university is the founding founder, father, I would say founding member of nuclear technology. All data with nuclear power plant, nuclear application, um, even nuclear weapon, it's all started in a university, academician. And that's what made me to think a lot, if you ask me. And academician plays an important role in developing nuclear technology in China. And these are the few experiences I will share is that, yes, technology-wise, they are even more far advanced than compared to more of all of us. Especially nuclear power plant. When I went to a nuclear power plant for a site visit, I saw the technological behind it. The amount of notice, I would say, the thing that they have been noticing it in, when it comes to laws and regulations, safety precautions, standards, it's all in par with international standards to make sure that everything follow the international standards. And even when they're using their applications, like for example, I would say um, some of medical applications, they have medical devices related to nuclear. Everything are done by experts. They have experts from the same university come together to contribute it. So these are the few things that I feel like I really hope that we in Malaysia can really do that. Is that university plays an important part in the development of nuclear technology. Not even nuclear technology, I would say any technology. Our connection between uh, industry and university need to need to be the same level as in CNNC. Okay, fun fact, Singo University is the one who started CNNC, China National Nuclear Corporation, who actually started from university as a university company like just like we have our own spin-off in utm so it all started and currently from there it grew up to become a, a corporation that own nuclear power plant in china so started from university so this i will say that university plays an important role in china and we as a students here all all of us are graduates all of us are doing our degree masters and phds we are contributing something. So let's, I want to, I will say a calling card, a calling to all the people who attend is that we learn from universities like Singwa and CNNC, give back to society. And that's the thing I want to say, that's a sharing I would say. Back to you, Anisha. Okay, thank you, Mr. Sakesh, for the interesting information. So I think I'm not going to comment much on that so that we can focus on many other questions uh, the participants have posted uh, so that they can hear the speaker's thoughts. Okay, the next question is from uh, Baharudin Nainar. 
Is nuclear weapon only dangerous to human life? How about nuclear technology? Any other nuclear technologies? I think maybe, maybe Mr. Sakesh, I think you can answer to this uh, also. And Mr. Chan can add on later. Okay, how about another nuclear technology? Okay, I, 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 the same analogy I use for a knife. Knife is very dangerous for human life. I can, okay, uh, let's take an example. Mr. Chan, I'm so sorry of it. Mr. Chan got angry at me one day, so he take a knife and stab me. Simple as that. So can we stop you ban, can we stop banning knife? Nuclear technology is a technology. It's how we are human are using it, moral codes and conducts. I believe all of us are study ethics in our engineering life. Or even, I'm not sure about other courses when it comes to engineering, especially nuclear engineering, we study about ethics. Okay. Is nuclear technology dangerous? It's very subjective, I would say. Let's, let's divide the few parts. Let's go with power plant first. Okay. Power plant, it is very beneficial because it is a cost-efficient power plant that can produce enough power for industrial country like Malaysia. Okay, compared to solar and hydro, this is a very deep topic, but we have a base level of energy that every day we need to produce. Okay. Nuclear power plant can give it. It is green technology in which you don't have other base other than uh, water vapor. Yes, the fuel is the, the residual fuel. The waste product is very dangerous, but in which we can contain it and store it for a longer period of time. And same goes to application. You know, X-rays, X-rays are actually part of nuclear technology. So it's X-ray dangerous. So, and same goes to all the scans, the radiography. You know, one of the greatest treatment for cancer is uh, radiotherapy, when in, in which we use radiation to treat cancer. So it's that dangerous. So when it comes to nuclear technology, it's simple as that, how we are going to use it? How individually are we going to use it? Is it for power plant? Is it for medical purposes? Is it for food purposes? I think we have someone who did internship, Sabrina from Unimap, who did internship in Agency Nuclear Malaysia. I think she knew all these applications, all the great research Agency Nuclear Malaysia are doing it, in which they're contributing a lot. Even when uh, Kairi Jamarudin, our Minister of Science, when he took his post as a Minister of Science and Technology, the first thing he did, he go and visit nuclear, Agency Nuclear Malaysia, in which he spoke on the parliament, saying that it's time for Malaysia to look into research institutions just like Agency Nuclear Malaysia. Use their research for a more industrial, robust experience. And I do agree with YB KJ on this matter. The technology is good if we know how to use it. If you want to use it just like a nuclear weapon, just like a knife, it is dangerous. So at the end, it depends on all of us. Back to you, Anusha. Okay, thank you, Mr. Sakesh. I think that's, uh, yeah, all this information, I think that's very, very useful. Okay, and then uh, due to time constraint, I think we cannot focus on all the questions posted by participants. Maybe we can have one question before we conclude. Okay, this question is from uh, Julaila Binti Abdul Aziz. Will the nuclear ban treaty force nations to destroy their nuclear weapon? Uh, what, what, are the, what are your views on the on the question, Mr. Chan and Mr. Sakish? Maybe okay. Mr. Chan, you can ask, answer? Yeah, okay. For this question, yeah. So from the history, yeah, there are some country that, that they have nuclear weapon, but at the end, they also abolish their own uh, nuclear weapon. Yeah. For example, South Africa. Uh, please hold on. Uh, for example, South Africa, uh, Ukraine, yeah, Argentina, yeah, Brazil, Iraq, Libya, Republic of Korea, yeah, Sweden, and Ukraine. So, hence, they are they already got around more than ten countries already do so. So we need to be optimistic. Yeah. So the reason we want to ban nuclear weapon is we don't want the disaster happen to. Hiroshima and Nagasaki happen again in our current uh, current life. Yeah, so we need to, be, need to be optimistic. Yeah, we keep on what we can do. Yeah, okay. I believe someday, so there is a world free from nuclear weapon. 
not nuclear te nuclear technology. We ju we still need nuclear technology, but not nuclear weapon. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Chang. I'm sorry that uh, dear participants, we could not be answering all the questions, but I appreciate all the questions has been asked in the chat. Uh, leaving only six minutes uh, to end our webinar, we will straight away move to uh, conclusions. Okay. Um, dear speakers, is there anything else you would like to add or wanted to cover before a wrap up? Maybe each speaker can take around uh, I think around one or maybe not more than two minutes to conclude on our topic of discussion today. Maybe Sakesh, you can start first. Thanks a lot, Anusha. Just like you said, just want to share to everyone is that before we talk about nuclear, mm -hmm. I want to talk, I want to say something about philosophical first. Knowledge needs to be learned. Whether and without knowing the things we cannot come to a conclusion. Same goes to nuclear technology. I've been following up what's happening in, in the world, especially when it comes to nuclear technology, even in our own country. We tend to say bad things about nuclear technology. We started to against nuclear technology because we don't understand it. You know, or, or Malay people have to say, tak kenal maka tak cinta. So something like that. So it's important for us to understand what is nuclear technology is all about, for us to, and for us to okay, fell in love with it. Because for me, nuclear technology is so beautiful. And it doesn't mean that I love nuclear weapons. Nuclear weapons are meant to be banned. We need to ban nuclear weapons. It is because it is very dangerous, just like Mr. Chan was explaining to all of us. It is very dangerous. It can be destroying. But look into another side of it. Look into the benefit of it. Look into the technological application of it and use it for the benefit and the growth of human civilization instead of destroying the human civilization. Many great civilizations have been destroyed because of the selfishness and the arrogance of the people and the leader because they want power. So why not we don't put power as the first reason to grow the country, but instead we put human advancement Civilization advancement and the world peace as the first reason to grow a nation. And with that, I believe personally that we can see and use nuclear for greater benefit and ban all the nuclear weapons. And one day, one day we can tell to our kids that we had a technology called nuclear weapon, they destroy us and now it's just a mint. We don't more need it. That's how I would say. Back to you, Anusha. Okay, how about Mr. Chan? Yeah, okay. Thank you, Mr. Sakesh, uh, sharing. Yeah. Okay, for me, as my, the last statement to do my conclusion, yeah, is because about the TPNW, even today, TPNW are entered into force, and even for the future, the International Criminal Court already in, entered into force that uh, nuclear weapon is banned. But we must not forget that yeah today murder is banned is is considered illegal in the law side but people still doing killing each other yeah so even for, for this uh, example um we can say that law yeah is to control the behavior of human but probably they can control 20 to 30 percent or Probably the law can control probably 80% or 90% of humans. But there must be always 10% of people is trying to break the law. Yeah. So the only human revolution. Okay. I, I can say that uh, the only solution to solve this kind of issue is to do a human revolution. Human revolution means we need to change from the bottom of our heart. We need to educate people. So education is the basis. We need to inform people that the, the dark side of the nuclear weapon. Yeah. So, so we need, the, for, for, the, for the reason of uh, education, uh, we need to keep on doing, to educate people, to, to do the exhibitions to the people, to let them away. Yeah. The only solution to solve the 
social issue social issue is from the bottom of our heart okay thank you okay thank you mr chang and mr sakish okay. Humanitarian impact of nuclear weapons and need to protect future generations from these uniquely horrific weapons. And we cannot prepare for the catastrophic consequences of a nuclear detonation. And so we have come to the end of our webinar. Thank you everyone for uh, participating in our webinar. We really appreciate of you being here. And thank you for all your efforts and time to attend this webinar during a weekend. And um, we hope this insight will expand your understanding on this issue. And special thanks uh, to all lecturers, Zati Noraini and Dr. Mazlan, for all their guidance and for giving us this opportunity to conduct a very informative webinar. And special mention to my teammates for their efforts and cooperation in making this webinar 